Is that little dude called Xiao down there? We gotta help him. Hold on. Something's not right here. What's this? It appears to be a small fissure. What can you possibly find inside? It can't be a living person, can it? <laughs> Conqueror of demons? Xiao, is that you? Uh, oh, I quit trying to scare us, okay? Huh? Wait, is this some kind of illusion? Paimon can't touch him! Conqueror of demons, can you hear us? Hello! Little dude! Anyone home? He isn't responding. What's going on here? You. Oh, he finally said something! Oh! We followed your voice and found you here, but it's kind of strange. We can't touch you. How did you become an illusion? <sighs> an illusion? Talk about a coincidence. We were just thinking you went missing and stuff, and then we heard the sound of you fighting. Pretty lucky we found you, if you ask me. <laughs> you didn't get hurt, did you? A coincidence? Wait. Something's not right. <coughs> Something's wrong with this domain. Leave now! Get out of there! If he can, we should have him regroup with us as soon as possible. Tell us what happened, and where you are now. We'll come find you immediately. No. Your safety is the top priority. It seems this space can... Huh? He disappeared. Where'd he go? It sounded like he might be injured. We need to go help him. It seems the only option we have to explore any further is through that entrance over there. Huh. He's injured and telling us to be careful? It's not like we're in any danger here. Anyway, the secret behind whatever's going on should be in this cave, right? Don't worry, little dude. Ito's on the way! Boss, please don't go charging ahead. You're an Oni, not some hunting dog. Don't worry! I'm invincible! <laughs> oh, my butt! <sighs> this looks pretty deep. Be careful, everyone. Tucker, how's your ear? It's fine! Ugh. My butt is tough! Go ahead, you can cry if it hurts. I promise I'll try not to laugh. What, what do you mean, try not to laugh? You should be feeling some serious sympathy for me right now. But wouldn't feeling sorry for you be a violation of your dignity? Besides, it's harder not to laugh when I'm not the one in pain. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> it's okay, everybody. If you want to laugh at him, just let it out. Don't you have a heart, Shinobu? Oh, and people think I'm the monster. Wait a second. Show's not here, but... Seems a little out of place here, don't you think? Maybe it's some sort of... Uh, I don't know, an emergency shelter? There was a picture book I read once that said nice people sometimes build cabins in dangerous places so that anyone in trouble can take shelter inside. Our little dude must be inside then. Yeah! I wouldn't be too sure about that. Any person with a normal sense of danger wouldn't be so optimistic. Wow, Bull Tucker. Looks like your subordinate is telling you what's what. Oh, I believe she was talking to both of us. Yeah, so you can wipe that smug smile off your face. All right, watch and learn, Shinobu. This is why I'm the boss and you're the deputy. If no one is macho enough to open the door, then allow me. Step aside. Once this door is open, we are out of here.
Evaloni, be gone. You heard me. Get out of here. Uh, am I seeing things? Or was there someone behind the door? Nah, can't be. You're just saying things. Why don't we just open the door again and see? Who? Uh, me? Oh, uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'll open it again. All you do is goof around all day. You're a bad influence to our child. Be gone! <laughs> Those people are carrying bowls. Bowls full of beans. What's that all about? People throw beans to drive out Oni. Boss is an Oni, so they throw beans at him to get rid of him. Gave me the fright of my life. What are people from Inazuma doing in a place like this anyway? <laughs> Calm down now. You're a person from Inazuma too, you know. Hey, let's get one thing straight, all right? I'm not a person, I'm an Oni. Right, but that's not the point. The question is, does this door lead to Inazuma? Huh? How can that be possible? Ugh, oh, this place is so weird. Paimon's starting to think it really is haunted. You guys go right ahead. I'm not opening it again. So, who's up? Oh, how about Paimon? Why don't you open it? No way! Somebody else do it! Paimon's scared! <sighs> All right, I'll try. That's our Shinobu! Now, don't let whoever's behind that door push you around, okay? All right, let's see what's behind the door this time. Still reading, Shinobu. Listen, young lady. You should keep your nose out of those books and start taking my advice. I've already found you a perfectly good job as a shrine maiden at the Grand Narukami Shrine. You'll be far better off there than... <laughs> uh, Shinobu? Who is that? No way! Was that who I think it was? Oh, this is embarrassing. That voice was my mother. If this was one place, I wasn't counting on having to hear that speech again. Your mother wanted you to become a shrine maiden? The whole reason I came to study in Liyue was because I didn't want to become a shrine maiden. My family never approved of my studies, so they wanted me to work in the Grand Narukami Shrine after I returned to Inazuma. From what we know about Lady Guji, it seems being a shrine maiden is a pretty cushy job. Think of it this way. Some cats can be domesticated and kept in the house, while other cats are meant to survive in the wild. And as for me, I need complete freedom and space. Although I do admit that being a shrine maiden is a decent job, it's just not for me. That's right. Your calling is with the gang. I mean, just look at you. You rock. You're totally hardcore. Come on, am I the only one with chills right now? It's true. You've got a good thing going. What's most important is that you enjoy what you do. Gotta agree with you there. From the look of it, what's behind the door can change. And not only that, it always changes to something that nobody wants to see. So, uh, how are we gonna get through that? And don't forget, we have that little dude waiting for us to save him. We need to get our rear in gear. Would any of you like to give it a try? Hmm, no thanks. I'd prefer not to open it if only something terrible awaits. If anyone's going to find a way through, it's not going to be me. Uh, why? Because I don't buy it, that's why. I don't believe for one second that we're gonna find the Conqueror of Demons by going through that door. So I'm sure as heck not gonna be the one to get us through. Not gonna lie, uh, you don't really sound like you have much of an imagination. All right, I'll try. Yeah! My savior, show him what you're made of. I'm sure I probably do, but nothing springs to mind right now. Anyway, I suppose I'll find out once I open the door.
You old geezer. Out of eight pounds of salt, today you gave away three for free, sold two, and exchanged three for booze. How much money did you actually make in the end? Huh? But didn't you tell me to sell things as I pleased? Why can't I give the customers something for free? You fool! You told the old man next door to come and fetch the salt. Well, he broke his leg on the way over, and now his son is asking for compensation. Seriously. <sighs> huh. A civil dispute. Didn't see that coming. Who are they? <sighs> no one in particular, but it is a prime example of the many difficult civil cases that I've had trouble handling before. Hmm. So you mean you don't like handling disputes over petty matters? Not exactly. What I mean is that I don't like working with people who cannot let go of trivial grievances, especially of the kind you saw just now. They start with good intentions, but end up making a big fuss. It's not long before those good intentions plunge into injury and accidents. <sighs> it's always a shame. It's my desire to solve problems for people. That's why I became a legal advisor. It just seems that I still can't fully comprehend the complicated minds of some people. <sighs> I understand what you mean. The human mind is probably both the most complicated and tragic of things. I suppose there is no need to discuss this any further. Does anyone else want to try the door? Don't look at me. I told you, I'm not taking a chance with that thing. Come on, Yelan. We're a team here. If you're not going to try, then at least give us a convincing reason why. <sighs> In that case, let me be perfectly clear. I serve Ningguang, the Tianxuan of the Qixing. The scope of my work includes some of Lirei's biggest secrets. The chances are, if I open this door, there can be no witnesses left alive. Is that a sufficient reason for you? Oh! Uh, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds impressive. Um, hey, Shinobu, uh, who's Ningguang? She's someone who won't let you walk out of the chasm alive if she finds out that you're prying into her secrets. Boss, you really do need to work on learning who's who in the world these days. Look, I knows what I needs to knows. It's called being a free oni. Oh, now Paimon gets it. Yelan works for Ningguang. <laughs> yes, which is precisely why I was trying to keep her secret. <laughs> we should avoid letting Yelan open this door. What about you, Traveler? Would you like to try? Yeah, go for it, Traveler. Besides, you never know who could be behind that door. Maybe it could even be Shell. I say give it a shot. Who knows? Maybe little dude is waiting for us on the other side. Everyone was super worried about you. Are you okay? Did you find anything, Traveler? So, did you find the person we want to rescue inside? Judging by the look on your face, I'm guessing you saw something a little... unpleasant in there?
Uh, don't worry. Paimon will keep searching for her with you. Cheer up! Uh, stupid door! I'll smash you to pieces! If Paimon wasn't feeling so exhausted, she'd help out too. Is this nap time? So let me get this straight. Not only did we not find Xiao through that door, we saw all the things that we wish to avoid. I'm starting to have a very ominous feeling about this domain. It's constantly changing, and its changes seem to be targeted at us. I feel the same way. We need to watch our every step. There is definitely more to this place than meets the eye. I concur. We came here following the Conqueror of Demons, but we ended up only finding a strange door. The things we've encountered on the other side of that door are equally strange. It shows us whatever we fear the most. We're in a space that defies common logic. <sighs> On top of that, I'm starting to feel tired after that experience. But I thought we'd established that getting tired doesn't happen down here. The phenomenon hasn't reached a lethal stage just yet. Otherwise, we would have starved to death without eating for so long. I'm starting to worry that we're being affected by the changes in this space. In order to avoid the sudden accumulation of hunger and fatigue, we should eat and rest regularly from now on. <sighs> Paimon suddenly feels exhausted. It's really tiring going through all this. That you mention it. I'm starting to feel tired too. <laughs> no, 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 no! It's all just an illusion. I will not let my mind play tricks on me. <sighs> Paimon's whole body just feels so heavy now. Hmm. According to the current evidence, it seems our physical condition was suspended in this space before which granted us immunity to the effects of fatigue and hunger. And now it seems that mental fatigue is unavoidable. Though we have yet to locate the Conqueror of Demons, I suggest we go back and get some rest. It'll be difficult to rescue anyone if we're on the verge of collapse ourselves. She's right. Hey, Lavender Melon, you okay? Want me to carry you?
You haven't slept at all. Are you sure you're okay? This place seems even more perilous than we first thought. Don't worry about me. Staying focused under pressure for as long as it takes is my specialty. Now, if I'm not mistaken, looks like you've got some new ideas. <laughs> it's my job to keep... I figured as much. They're just preliminary ideas at this point, but I have... Sure. I also have some ideas of my own. <laughs> as they say. Hard to believe what we've encountered. Well, I suppose there's no use hiding it anymore now that everyone's seen it. What you all saw really was after these last few years with the Arataki gang. Oh, the list of annoying things to strolling around the streets. Just don't laugh at me, okay? Bushi. You sure you can't find a way? Mm. Yep, that's the. Gotta be honest, I have a no idea. Mm. Oh come on, don't get mad at me. I did think about just using my only super strength to dig our way out, but the rocks here are even tougher than prison walls. The rocks didn't even budge when Ushi charged him. It's pretty obvious this place is meant to keep us in here. The only thing I can do now is, uh, well... Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. By the way, Traveler, if you have a moment, could you do me a favor? I'd like to discuss something with you. Please, come meet me over there. Thanks for coming to speak with me, Traveler. I've been thinking about this place. Since we still don't know just what kind of danger we're up against, we can't afford to delay any longer. We have to find the Conqueror of Demons as soon as possible. Don't you think it's a strange coincidence that as soon as you told us about the Conqueror of Demons, we heard his voice in that place? It almost seems deliberate. As if something was trying to convince us that the Conqueror of Demons was there in order to lure us into the unknown. I have a theory, but I can't tell the others just yet. I don't want anyone to panic. Judging from the Conqueror of Demons' reactions, I think that he was somewhere else, but his voice and image were projected to our location. Is it possible that we've entered into a chaotic space? We're seeing things in people that shouldn't be, and we don't feel hungry because the state of our bodies is suspended. If that's true, it means we've entered into a place where normal logic doesn't apply. When you put it all together, everything points towards one possibility. This is a place where time and space are thrown into chaos. And yet, if it's truly chaotic, how did we find our friend's voice even when we had no idea where he was? It doesn't make any sense. Unless this space wanted us to hear it. Which brings me to my next point. I also have a theory about our encounter with the Conqueror of Demons earlier. I submit that we didn't actually see the Conqueror of Demons. He was somewhere else. But his status was transmitted to us through a, some kind of mind-bending spatial alteration. Traveler, you said you saw the abyss in that room, didn't you? At first glance, that door may seem like a prank. It shows you whatever you're afraid of, but if it manages to lure you inside... There's no way of knowing what might be in there. One minute, it's playing a joke to get you to lower your guard. The next, the danger is real, and it's trapped you.
this face is a powerful opponent. He wants to use our minds against us. But I'm not gonna sit here and do nothing. Do you remember that small spatial rift next to the dissolving gland? It felt like spatial magic, but it seemed much more powerful than usual. When we saw that illusion of the Conqueror of Demons, it seemed like he wasn't expecting our spaces to intersect at all, and was even more surprised that we could hear and see him. I think that this face purposefully transmitted the Conqueror of Demons' voice to lure us into a trap. But I also think it didn't count on that spatial rift happening. In other words, the fact that we saw and spoke with the Conqueror of Demons was never part of its plan. Yes. Also, I had a good look around after coming back. I have a feeling that these chaotic spaces are constantly intersecting with each other, meaning that anything is possible. I think this gives us an opportunity. If the space creates phenomena meant to deceive us based on our imagination, then we have to keep imagining, Traveler. If we try to stay calm and listen carefully, maybe, just maybe, we'll hear the Conqueror of Demons' voice again. Can you feel that? Let me see. I think it's here. And break! <sighs> I secretly learned Yelan's illusion breaking method without her knowing. <laughs> really didn't expect that to work. The sound came from behind this illusion. Let's go in and take a look. If we try to stay calm and listen carefully, maybe, just maybe, we'll hear the Conqueror of Demons' voice again. It's getting clearer. No. This is the chasm. What did we go through here? That battle so years ago. What is he doing here? The one I can't. Is that. From Aksha? The voice is much clearer now. We're close. Conqueror of Demons, can you hear me? It's Yenfei. The Traveler and I are trying to find you. Uh, Traveler? Yenfei? It worked. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm fine. 
listen to me. It's chaotic here. We may not be in the same space, but sometimes the sound can get through, which means these separate spaces intersect from time to time. Everything is chaotic here. No. The darkness that sullies my soul is harmful to mortals. Right now, we have more dangerous things to worry about than that. This space is using our urge to find you to lure us into traps. Without you here with us, our search for you could very well lead us into danger. So, you're in danger too? There was no need for you to search for me. But we're worried about you. And earlier, the Traveler was tricked into entering a dangerous place. How do we meet? Conqueror of Demons, can you find out where our voices are coming from? Find the spot where our voices are the clearest and try... something there. It might work. I see. The spaces may intersect amidst the chaos. By try something, do you mean... Hurry! If we miss this chance, we might not get another one. Hmm. Stand back! Now we can have... Oh. A lot's happened here, but this wasn't just for our own safety. You're injured. We can't just leave you alone. It's just a flesh wound. I am fine. I shouldn't let myself be a burden to you. You're not a burden. Don't think that for one second. We need you. All of us. For our sake. Please. Stay here. Please. Fine. As you wish. You're injured. Get some rest. Everything else can wait.
astrologers must rid themselves of material desires. Only by ridding oneself of clutter can one see the true world around them. You will see you now. <laughs> Divination is about precisely foretelling one's written destiny. Over embellishing that fate only leads to misconception. It's getting clearer. And now, this is the chasm. What did Bokish go through here? If Bokish just met that as so years ago, what is he? The voice is much clearer now. We're close. Conqueror of demons. Can you hear me? It's Yenfei. The Traveler and I are trying to find you.
Ah, traveler. It worked. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm fine. Listen to me. It's just everything is chaotic here. No, the darkness that right now we have more dangerous things to worry about than that. Without you here with us, our search for you could very well lead us into danger. <sighs> so. <sighs> Was... We were worried about you, and earlier, the Traveler was tricked into entering a dangerous place. <sighs> How do we meet? Conqueror of Demons, can you find out where our... I see. The spaces make my... Try something. Hurry! It's... Hmm. Stand back! <laughs> Let's get him back. <sighs> now we can avoid getting. Oh. A lot's happened here, but this wasn't just for our own safety. You're injured. He can't just leave you alone. It's just a flesh wound. <sighs> I am fine. I shouldn't let myself... You're not a burden. Don't think that for one second. We need you. All of us. For our sake, please. Fine. If you're injured, get some rest. Everything else can wait. <sighs> All right. The one I am is that the plain Aksha. You don't look well. I guess things do. It's okay. Uh, sometimes I really am. Ushi, looks like our little lab. Man, she looks wiped out. Man, that little dude looks done in. Oh, I sleep like this when I'm in jail. <laughs> Good one. Traveler, when did you get here? expected. Oh, a traveler? You're both here. Great. I want to talk to you. I also felt that the space was targeting us, but Yenfei managed to exploit its weakness. <laughs> Leave it to Yenfei to find a loophole. Based on what just happened, we can now confirm our suspicions that space and time function chaotically here. In addition, we must stay vigilant to avoid the traps set for us by this place. Now that we've found the Conqueror of Demons, the next thing we need to do is find a way out.
I went back to the domain again just now, although I couldn't find a new route. It wasn't a completely fruitless trip. My clan has practiced magic for generations, and has created some catalysts that only we know how to use. I recognized something like one of those catalysts in the domain. Unfortunately, it disappeared as soon as I approached it. I think so, but it's hard to distinguish between reality and illusion here. I can't be sure. Also, I am the only one out of all of us who could know what it would look like. To me, that confirms that this place really is reading our minds. Just like with that door. It's like it's alive, and testing us. By reading our minds and showing us what we want, it creates the reality that we want to be true. Everything it does is either to get us to lower our guard, or to wear us down. If that's the case, it can only have one goal. To trap us here until we die. What else could it be? We should prepare for the worst, but we mustn't give up. I've always known there were secrets hidden in the chasm, but even the Qixing have never heard about anything like this. Yelon, when we first ran into you, you s <sighs> I... was looking for the truth behind the monster invasion from Conria. Please keep everything I'm about to say to yourselves. No one else can know. Otherwise... We got it. Five hundred years ago, a wave of dark beasts from Conria attacked the Seven Nations of Tevat. Naturally, Liyue was also affected. Under Rex Lapis's command, the Millerith fought hard to hold the front line near the chasm. But these were vicious beasts, and this was the most desperate battle Liyue had ever faced. At a critical moment, someone distracted the monsters and led them away. Just when all hope seemed lost, the tide turned. The Liyue army eventually won the war. But there were many who never returned. Two of my ancestors took part in that war, and the one who made it back went insane. Everything about it was strange. The current generation of Qixing knows very little about these events, and very few came back from the chasm alive. Finding out the truth has been a waiting game. The day the chasm was unsealed, I put in a request to be transferred here, so I could finally learn the truth of what happened back then. But this place we've ended up in, and the possibilities we're facing, it's all far more terrifying than I'd imagined. <sighs> we can't give up. Right now, our number one priority has to be getting out of here alive. You've suddenly gone quiet. Shh. We'll talk later. 
I'm just processing all these. Maybe the key to our escape is hidden in some. All right. Oh, don't worry. I won't. No, I meant if you're. You don't look well. I guess things... It's okay. You don't have to... Uh, sometimes I really envy... Hey, Ushi. Looks like... Man, she looks... Man, that little... Oh, I sleep like this... Traveler? When did you get here? Because she's never seen a crazy place like this before. Who would have thought the best guide in all of Tibet could end up so out of their depth? <laughs> Traveler, it looks like the Conqueror of Demons is awake. I'm fine. Don't worry. Karma I carry is dangerous to humans. Keep your distance. Well, I have Adepti blood in me, so I wouldn't worry too much. Even so. What happened while Paimon was sleeping? How did Xiao get here? With a little help, I was able to find my way here. Conqueror of Demons, could you tell us what happened before you joined us? No need to be so formal. Just call me Shell. Oh, sure. <sighs> it was a senseless battle. I came here looking for someone, but when I found them, they weren't anything like how I expected. Madam Ping says that you usually base yourself at Wang Shuin to guard the main road through Di Hua Marsh. It's unusual for you to go looking for someone yourself. Are they in adept? <sighs> I'm looking for a Yaksha called Bosatius. Bosatius? Is that one of the five Yakshas? Like you? I thought that you were the only one left. Aren't the other four... gone from the world? You could say that. But Bosatius's body is the only one that was never found. Yakshas deal with God's remains all the time, and we become tainted by karma. Over time, it inevitably drives us to madness. 
The last time I saw Bosatius, it was the day he lost his mind. He left. No one knew where he went, and I never heard from him again. But Bosatius was the eldest of us. He once told us, as Yakshas, we will experience countless wars. Whether we live or die, we must promise to take care of each other and know each other's fate to the very end. Did he forget his promise because he lost his sanity? It's possible, but I did not. I am the sole survivor. So it is my duty to find out the fates of the others. What made you come to the chasm? Did you hear something about Bosatius being here? Did you know that 500 years ago, the beasts of Conria invaded the chasm? That war lasted a long time. It is said that in the midst of the battle, a brave Yaksha was seen putting up a heroic fight. But no one knew the Yaksha's name. But there were many more than five Yakshas in total, so there's no guarantee it was Bosatius. Wow. But you must think it was probably him if you came here to investigate, right? I am by no means certain, and I didn't have any other clues except for this one. But Bosatius was proud. If he had taken part in that war, he would have announced his name. So at first, I thought the nameless Yaksha couldn't be him. <clears throat> Wait, so it was Bosatius you were fighting with? Did he injure you? Yes. No way! The invasion of monsters from Conria, the battle in the chasm, and Yelon's ancestor. I have a feeling that somehow, these are all connected. Life is full of coincidences, but this is too much of a coincidence. Could this all be related to the fantastic compass mentioned in the will, too? What will? Oh, right. I came here because of a will. Maybe it's not something you've come across much before, but both mortals and adepti sometimes write out their final wishes so somebody else will carry them out after they've passed. It's known as a last will and testament. And this can be done at any time? Whoa, whoa! Do you want to write a will? Now? <sighs> it was no accident that you saw my illusion that day. This place used your desire to find me to create a trap that you would willingly walk into. Pure deception is easy to spot, but the truth laced with lies can be a fatal combination. What you heard were really things that I said. It made sure you heard my real voice to create panic. This one-way communication was the bait. If we hadn't managed to get in touch through the spatial rift, we may well have lost someone by now. Rather than murdering in cold blood, this space seems more intent on consuming souls. How is this even possible? Our opponent is very clever. It is not safe to stay here. Everyone, whether I accomplish what I came here to do or not, I must find a way to get you out safely. Hmm. I rejoin to warn you that it's extremely dangerous here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. But how do you know?
you might become a shadow of your former self, wandering the underground like a lost soul. Hmm. Sounds like you... Galen. I've been back a while. I was listening to the conversation. I've seen some strange things here, too. Objects that shouldn't be here. Strange figures that... So they're just illusions? At first I had to say, but it's not that simple. There may come a day when these illusions become real and attack you. From what you were saying a moment ago, it sounds like you know a way out of here. I can't say for sure. It's as Yanfei said, this space is chaotic and unstable, but it has its weaknesses. By attacking the point where both spaces connect, I was able to create a rift and move from one to the other. So, if I use all the energy I have, I may be able to tear a passage out of this chaotic space. Really? So powerful attacks can affect the space itself. I had wondered if that was a possibility. Whoa, 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 whoa. But what do you mean by all the energy you have? I mean, it will take everything I've got. Wait a minute. When you said you were gonna get us out safely, you mean you're gonna stay here? You can't be serious. I saw Bosatius underground. That's when a, a single blast can only create a very small opening. To send you back to the outside world, I may need to continuously channel power in order to keep the tunnel open. I know how to fight to the bitter end. I can do this. No. No way. Even if what you're saying is true, I can't agree to this. I'm on neither! Not much of an escape plan if we gotta leave someone behind. It's only a good or bad plan if there are other options to compare it to. But that's not the situation we're in right now. I doubt you'd still be stuck here if anyone had a better idea. B but can you be certain that your plan will work? I cannot. What is wrong with you? You can't bet your life on something if you don't even know it's gonna work. To conclude, I'm not agreeing to this plan. What if I told you, this is my last will? That's your strategy. No offense, but we have no guarantee this plan of yours will succeed. Or even that it's safe. You said it yourself. Yakshas pose a danger to humans. You really ex The battlefield is a treacherous place. Every opportunity you take, you put ev- I've been in my fair share of treacherous battles. So I know full well that you never bring up extreme measures like this until the very, very end. <laughs> you say these things in the hope that we will understand and accept them. But if you don't even know that your self-sacrifice is going to pay off, all you're doing is hurting morale. Besides, if you were really so determined to end it all, you wouldn't have given us the opportunity to share our opinion. You think you're oh so cold and ruthless, but I'm not buying it. And anyway, losing one of us so the rest can escape? <laughs> Some victory that is. Yelon, don't be so harsh. <sighs> Point is, it's not time for drastic measures yet. It's possible there's a hidden passage leading to the exit that we just haven't discovered. What if there isn't? Or if we don't find it? And in the end, I'm so weak that I don't have the strength left to sacrifice myself. What do you propose we do then? As things stand, there's no difference between sacrificing you and trying to find another way out, in terms of the likelihood of success. If we can't say that one strategy is better than the other, we certainly shouldn't be rushing into a risky course of action. Some would say a strong enough strike can break us out of this place. Yeah, that's right. I heard ya. No one's staying behind to let anyone else out, all right? Enough talk. It's time for action. Come on, whatever you are. Let's see how long you manage to keep us trapped in here after I'm finished with you. Uh, easy now. 
have a taste of this! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> 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 Whew, okay, so I didn't tear the whole place down. <clears throat> but check it out, new path! <laughs> if you need a hero, I'm the man for the job. this coming Ugh, why do you always have to do things like this Shinobu what happened to Ito did he pass out <coughs> the boss used up all his strength in one punch maybe that's the reason he managed to tear open a passage let me see if there's any way I can stabilize it. He did this because he heard us arguing, right? <sighs> the thing with Boss is, he just can't stand conflict between teammates. Whenever we get into an argument in the Arataki games, he always goes and does something shocking to calm everyone down. <sighs> Today, he's done it again. He may not have known you for very long. But when he said he sees everyone as part of the same team, he truly means that. Mm. Another thing with Boss is, he hates it when other people sacrifice themselves, but he always seems to end up doing it himself. That said, there's a slight distinction to be made with him. When he does things like this, he doesn't really think he's sacrificing himself, because he genuinely believes that he's strong enough to defeat any obstacle he's facing. Giant ego alert! And wasn't he just doing the same thing Chow suggested? <sighs> the boss is hardly open to persuasion. Besides, he always acts without thinking. There's no doubt that he really thought he was about to solve everything in one hit. Uh, it's not just him either. The other guys in the Arataki gang are more or less the same. That's why they need someone like me to clean up after them. I couldn't stop him if I tried. I might as well just let him do his thing. Besides, often his harebrained intuition is surprisingly on point. We might punch our way out of here yet. Uh, Ito, please tell Paimon you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't be. You have nothing to apologize for. Both you and Yelan made some very good points. Still... If this was an Arataki gang issue, and you were one of our members, I have to say I'd side with Yelan on this one. The boss definitely wasn't sacrificing himself. He firmly believed that we'd be able to find a way out through the passage he opened up, and he's certainly not expecting to be left behind. Everyone's important. We have to support each other if we're going to get out of here. Your survival is of huge importance to some people. No, to a whole lot of people. Everyone, let's all do our best to try and find a way out. There's still a chance. I'm sure we can escape. Leave the boss to me. Don't worry. <sighs> Everyone, it seems this passage doesn't lead to the outside world, but deeper inside. What the? So Ito's efforts were in vain? No, it's still worth exploring. I'll go and take a look first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm with you. Uh, what? So far, I still haven't found the thing I came looking for. That magical device, remember? If this domain has the power to project our imaginations or the things we're searching for into reality, well, maybe I can use that to my advantage to track it down. She keeps telling us to keep going. If it's a magical device, it must be super powerful. Well, I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a try. I will find a way. Let him go. But if you're planning on going into that domain too, then come with me. After all, I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> we'll be safer if we team up. 
By the way, um, you and Xiao seem pretty close, huh? Yelan got a bit worked up just now, so I just wanted to apologize on her behalf. I have to say, though, if Yelan hadn't spoken out like she did, I'm not sure she would have gotten through to him. Also, self-sacrifice is something Yelan feels strongly about. She tried to stop whoever it was. From what I know, she's lost comrades in the line of duty before, and then was rescued herself. Maybe being a survivor is what makes her so against seeing other people sacrifice themselves. How can things ever be the same again, knowing that your life was saved when others weren't? In a way, salvation can also be a burden. If I were her, I'm not sure I would have done anything different. Oh, wait, one second. I'll be right there. Yeah! <sighs> right, that's much safer. Since Ito can't fight right now, I've cast a spell to protect you guys. Thank you, Senpai. Please, be careful. We will. Same to you. All right, Traveler, let's go.